Rheumatic heart disease is an irreversible heart damage caused by poorly treated or repeated infections from Streptococcus bacteria, also known as sore throat. According to heart experts, over 40 million people, especially children, live with this disease, but hardly notice, hence accounting for over 300,000 deaths annually. According to the goal study by the Uganda Heart Institute, Clinical trials show that early detection of rheumatic heart disease and treatment with penicillin can prevent it from progressing and causing more damage to the heart as opposed to valve repair or replacement in the final stages. Study whereby it is proved and were proved for the first time world over that penicillin slows the devastating impacts of rheumatic heart disease in the children from the Ugandan population. These findings address an acquired heart disease. Having a sore throat, joint pain, rheumatic fever among others are some of the initial signs of rheumatic heart disease. According to Dr. Joslyn Rebembera, one will hardly notice if they have the rheumatic heart disease unless clinical trials are carried out. By a fever, so uh, the temperature is high, joint pains, which are migratory, you know, uh, right now at midday, the child says my knee joint is paining. By 2 p.m. it's the ankle joint which is paining. Now, unfortunately, this um, febrile illness is often misdiagnosed as malaria, not knowing that it is, it is acute traumatic fever, and that would be an opportunity if a correct diagnosis is made. According to Dr. Peter Luabi, people should shun from poor health styles, which include poor eating habits, excessive consumption of alcohol, smoking among others, and resort to exercise, which cardiologists say is the only way to keep the heart healthy. People are eating more refined foods, a lot of sugar, a lot of saturated fat. Uh, people exercise less, and therefore uh, they are prone to obesity. Uh, smoking, which is a very bad habit, is known to affect the heart, the lungs, and cause cancers and many other problems. And then the excessive consumption of alcohol. According to the Commission on Non-Communicable Diseases from the Ministry of Health, Dr. Charles Okia Oyo, policies should be put in place to implement these findings for consideration. That, you know, administration of finances and you know, can prevent or as offers much more benefit in changing the, the, the progression of the disease, then I think you can even be, you can, based on the recommendation, I'm, I'm, I'm yet to see the findings. If we are saying, yes, let's take this now as a country, we adopt this as a, you know, our policy you know, recommendation, it will be done. Dr. Craig Sebo, one of the lead sponsors of this clinical trial, says they are determined to train medics to carry on this program to the rest of Uganda and other African countries. Children, and how do we expand them to the 20 million children in Uganda and then the hundreds of millions of children in Africa? And I look forward to sharing um, our brief with the Ministry of Health to come up with a roadmap to give this disease the investment it deserves for pennies at pennies a month of penicillin and an inexpensive ultrasound machine that we know we can train many healthcare workers to use. So I am Mary Namkose for UBC News.